Hello, MJ7NLK here and welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber then I would like to thank you for your continued support. If you're not, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell as it really does help the channel out. Today we are revisiting the President Martin CB radio, as we have finally managed to crack the secret key combination to access the factory services menu. This opens up the radio and allows us to fine tune it for our specific needs. If you haven't seen the original review and test of the President Martin then click the link shown on the screen now, or check out my channel's video listings and you can find it there. So let's get the disclaimer out of the way. I purchased these radios with my own money. No one has editorial input over this content, all views and opinions are my own and no one is sponsoring this video. Get in contact if you're interested. I purchased this particular radio from Knights Electricom who are a fine purveyor of CB radio equipment based in the UK and I highly recommend them. One last thing to get out of the way, I must point out that modifying a radio is at your own risk. I am doing this so you don't have to. You will have legal obligations in your region with regards to radio transmissions, licensing and power outputs. You should always ensure that you are not causing a nuisance and more importantly not causing any radio interference or distress to others. I want to take a moment to talk about power output. Each country or region will have its own rules and regulations on licensing and allowed power outputs. On the 27th of June 2014 AM and single sideband were legalised for the first time in the UK. So in this jurisdiction the legally allowed power outputs are a maximum of 4 watts carrier power on AM FM and 12 watts peak envelope power on single side band. Any radio that outputs more than this is illegal and could land you in all sorts of trouble. In my videos I show you how the radios work and what options are available so that you can adjust your radio within your region to within the legal boundaries. No two CB radios are identical and outputs can vary from box to box. The newer style, more microelectronic radios do not have potentiometers and all the adjustments are performed via hidden menus that the factory use to calibrate the device. Your radio may be quoted as outputting up to 4 watts in the user manual but when tested this can be as low as 2.5 watts. Accessing the services menu and adjusting your radio is fine as long as you keep within the legal boundaries in your region. So that begs the question, why do I show you what the radio is capable of over and above the 4 watt limit? Well there are multiple reasons for this. One pure interest in knowing what the actual maximum achievable is. 2. Your country or region may have lower or higher legal power limits so you are able to adjust it and comply with the law. 3. You may want to use the radio for near field communications only and want to lower the power to below 1 watt and not all radios have a convenient button to do this. 4. You may want to adjust a poorly performing radio closer to its legally allowed output and 5. You may want a radio that operates normally but has the potential in a doomsday scenario to be expanded to allow for emergency communications with others. All of my radios that are used in the making of these videos are returned to an unexpanded state and tuned to output 3.9 watts paying close attention to ensuring that this applies to all modes. For my 10 and 12 meter ham radios my ham licence allows for much greater power output but you need to sit an exam and obtain a licence before you can use a ham radio to transmit. 
expanding a ham radio to cover the 11 meter band is not illegal provided you are only listening on that band. It's stupid really, a £2000 ICOM ham radio is a far more sophisticated and quality piece of equipment than a £100 CB radio, but because it's not type approved for CB frequencies it's not legal to use for transmission. Look at the President Richard and the President Walker too. They are the same radio, with the same PCB, but the difference is that President Electronics have self certified that the Richard conforms as a ham radio and the Walker 2 as a CB radio. God forbid that somebody might want to use both ham and CB frequencies and only want one device. Maybe in the future President can certify a radio like the Lincoln 2 Plus for both. So why are we revisiting the President Martin? Well, that is because I was previously unable to work out the combination of buttons to push to enter the service menu. I have now cracked the combination and can show you how it's done, and we can discuss the different settings it reveals. So without further ado, let's get on with it. In the original review of the President Martin we tested the radio and out of the box it achieved some respectful numbers. On FM it was outputting 3.5 watts and when expanded it was outputting 4.29 watts in the midband. On AM it was outputting 3.7 watts and when expanded was outputting 5.1 watts. Now we have access to the service menu we can dial back the power in expanded mode to within legal limits and this enables us to listen in on additional frequencies if they are outside of what your country allows in transmission. To access the factory services menu you need to become an octopus as it involves many button presses and actions. So in order to do this ensure that the radio is turned off, push and hold the PTT button, keeping the PTT button pressed you need to press the mode key and the F key at the same time, keeping them depressed and turn the radio on. Release all buttons and you will see TS displayed on the screen. Now that only gets displayed for about five seconds before the radio resets itself. Whilst TS is displayed, you need to press the F key once and the mode key once in order to access the menu. So let's do that again. Turn the radio off, push and hold the PTT button, push mode, push F and turn the radio on, release, push F and push mode. Then you will see the screen goes white, a white background colour and it will display either PL or P2 on the screen depending on whether the radio is modified or not. We are in expanded mode at the moment and we will run through the settings in expanded mode because you get more settings in this mode than you do in the standard mode and then we will revert to standard mode and show you those. So I have produced a helpful uh, guide or sheet to the services menu and the settings which I will display on the screen now and you can pause the video and take a screenshot of that if you wish. Now with all service menus for the President Radio uh, you can toggle through the relevant settings by using the up down button on the microphone or you can use the channel button. Uh, holding the PTT button will reveal the current setting, so for mode P2 which is the FM high power adjustment, holding that PTT button in will show the existing value is 72. Now if we bring the power meter into, into play you will see the power 
reflected on the power meter as the radio uh, in the services menu will actually transmit, which enables you to adjust it without having to jump in and out. So high power mode P2, standard value 72, and it's outputting 4.29 watts. You adjust the setting by holding the PTT button and then turning the volume, sorry, the channel selector, and I will do that now. So in high power mode expanded, 4.3 watts, and we can increase this in steps and we'll go all the way up to the highest value, which is 8 a. So this radio is capable of outputting 8.63 watts at its highest power output. Now I would like this to be 4 watts so I will back that back off down to the 4 watt mark at value 70. Now changing the button and moving to PL mode. PL mode is FM low power adjustment and this is the power setting that you will get when the radio is not modified or expanded. You will not get the P2 option. In this mode my standard value is 70 which is outputting a little bit over 4 watts so we'll just drop that to one lower which is 6F which is outputting 3.91 watts. And the next setting is F2, which is the FM deviation mode. My standard value is FF. If you don't have the relevant equipment, don't mess with this setting. You need to adjust it to 1.9 kilohertz. Next setting is A2. A2 is only available in expanded mode. And this is the AM high power amplitude adjustment. Mine is 59 is my standard setting and this should be adjusted to between 85 and 86%. Next you have AL, and this is the uh, AM low power amplitude adjustment, which is available in the standard settings mode. My standard value is 49 for this radio, and the, it should be adjusted to between 89 and 90%. We have R1, and R1 is the S meter adjustment. Mine is set to 37, and this should be adjusted with an S meter to a value of approximately 3 on the needle. SE is the software version. In standard mode, it will show as S, and in expanded mode, SE. Uh, either way, 1.0 is the value on my unit and then back to P2. So I will revert this radio back to unmodified and I will run through those menus again shortly. So having reverted the radio back to unmodified or unexpanded state, we can quickly zip through the menus that are displayed. So we have PL, which is the FM low power adjustment. We have S, which is the software version 1.0. We have the S meter configuration adjustment setting. We have the low power amplitude uh, adjustment. And we have F2, which is the FM deviation mode. So those are the only settings that are available whilst in unmodified or unexpanded mode. So in order to exit the services menu, all you need to do is turn the radio off and then turn the radio back on again. And we're in standard operation mode. So let's run through a quick power test in all three modes to make sure we don't exceed the legal limit. So in AM, 3.91 watts. Moving to FM, 3.89 watts and FM UK 3.55 watts. And finally, because I will be asked the question, what is the highest output power of the radio when in standard mode? 
Well, we're in the services menu. We're on the PL adjustment, the power low adjustment. So let's see what the radio uh, is capable of doing without switching to modification. So the setting 7A is giving 6.1 watts at its highest and we need to return that to 6F at 387. So in conclusion, the President Martin is a nice little radio, although a bit basic. I did wonder why it had a heatsink on the back when it only output 5 watts when expanded. And that pushed me to put in a bit of effort to discover the service menu combination so that we could see what headroom it had under the bonnet. When expanded and fully turned up, this little radio is capable of 8.7 watts, which the preppers will be happy to discover. Now priced at £109, it's a solid purchase but really does lack the bells and whistles of radios that are only marginally more expensive. I still think the best bang for your buck is the President Richard, which costs £149 and is a lot of radio for the money. It doesn't have single sideband but has everything else including 50 watts output, but you require a ham licence to use it. The Lincoln 2 Plus is better still and includes single sideband, but the price jumps up significantly by over £100 more to get this radio. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, then please help the channel out by liking and subscribing. This really does help and ensures that I can continue to provide great content. Please feel free to buy me a coffee. Details are in the description below and thank you Skyrus1, it's very much appreciated. If you have any questions or comments then you know what to do in the comments below. All I ask is that you keep it respectful. Nasty know-it-alls need not apply. Well, until next time, stay safe, stay happy and catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.